I'm making this quick video to tell you guys about a great vocab building website. I am not sponsored by this website. I just found it in a list of the best GRE and SAT vocab websites on Prep Scholar. Link in the description. So I thought I'd take a look. And the number one reason why I think it's brilliant, especially for a lot of you guys who've seen my previous videos, is that it covers a lot of words not featured in other vocab lists. And even more importantly, it gives you the ability to see the words in a flashcard format. What do I mean by that? Well, if you go down to their GRE vocab prep, and the words also appear in the SAT, you can click on flashcards, for example, for the first 50 words, and up comes this. And what's so good about it is, I think you can hear that, it says the word out loud, so you can hear how the word is pronounced as well as the definition. And notice it doesn't give you the definition immediately. You have to then see for yourself if you know the word and check if it's right. To expedite here, I believe, means to make something quicker, to facilitate something to make sure it happens quicker. Let's see if I was right. It means to facilitate, to help along, to speed the progress off, exactly. And then it gives you the next word, did you, superficial. Did you hear that? So you can hear it, how it's pronounced. Check if you know what it means. Superficial means on the surface only. Not true and genuine, but only a facade on the surface. Artificial. To be superficial is to be shallow, concerned only with the obvious, not deep or probing. Yes, yeah, so you can describe a person as superficial. But as they say here, you can also describe anything as being shallow and on the surface. Like a wound is superficial if it only cut the surface and didn't go deep. Either way, this gives you an idea of how their flashcard system works. There are 720 words, and that's a very achievable target for most students. And finally, and this is what I wanted to do for this video, you can test the words in a quiz format. And I thought I would take a couple of quizzes to show you how that goes. So here, quiz one, words one to 50. You need to attitude. You need to enable Flash to get this to work. So it's quite old school software. I think this website's probably made in the 90s or something. But either way, it's a very effective website, I think. Again, they don't sponsor me. I just found this and I think it's great for a lot of you. So I thought I'd let you know. Of course, the link to the website will, is also in the description. But let's see if I can score 100% on... I'm going to do a couple of quizzes to see how it goes. I'll also describe how likely a lot of these words are to come up to give you a flavor of their accuracy. So aptitude definitely could come up. It means your skill in doing something. They say here, your natural ability. Yes, that's a good definition. Your aptitude towards something. Good. You hear that? They give you a bit of praise when you do well. It says good, great. An aptitude is a natural ability, a talent, inclination. I like the definitions. They're less like a dictionary and more kind of conversational, which is good. And they give you an example of a sentence. A perfect way to memorize vocabulary, actually. In 720 words, you know, you could do that in, say, four weeks and learn all of them. And I think that's very achievable. Anyway, let's see. Superficial. We covered that already. That means shallow. Right. Expedite. To expedite means to facilitate, as we saw earlier. Right. Edify. Edify means to build up. And how would they describe it? Ooh, to uplift or to harden. I was edified. I think in general it's more positive than to harden, which is more of a neutral word. To uplift. That speech was very edifying. It lifted me up. That's what I would say. They could pick harden. It means to build up. Which one would you pick? I would say uplift. Yes. Right. Okay. It is a quite a positive word. If a speech was edifying or a book was edifying, it kind of teaches you, builds you up, lifts you up. That was quite a hard one, though. Singular. Singular. Unique. Oh, this is an interesting one. I think a lot of people would be tempted by some of the other answer choices. What I like as well is they make some of the other answer choices quite tempting. Like, is it lonely because you're single? But no, singular means unique. He has a singular ability to incite a crowd. It means he has a unique talent for doing that. No one else can quite match how he does that. 
So singular means unique. Right. Right. Brilliant. Affinity. Affinity is an attraction towards something. You're drawn towards something. You have an affinity for it. Yes. Good. Good. I only got a good there. What about great? Willful. To be willful is to be a bit obstinate, a bit stubborn, a bit hot-headed. You do your own thing, or they say. Headstrong. Yeah, you follow your own direction, your own will, not other people's. I would say headstrong here. Right. Okay, so going well so far, but this is all about your vocab learning. So you can obviously learn some new words from this video, but then if you go to the website in the description afterwards, you can make sure you've mastered all 720 words. Decorous. Decorous means following decorum, following good manners, being appropriate in your behavior. So out of those, I would say it's in good taste. Yes, you're being appropriate. It's, good. It's appropriate for the situation, which is another phrase for saying that, in good taste. Her actions were in good taste. They were appropriate, proper. Scrutinize. To scrutinize is to examine something carefully. There you go, to carefully examine. Right. Very good. Languish. To languish is to kind of rot and wither away. Uh, to proceed cautiously, no. To experience prolonged inactivity. Yeah, you're rotting away. You're languishing in jail is a phrase often used. Yeah. So that went well. And I'm going to do one more quiz. And then we will call it a day because I think you get the idea. I think you can do a quiz of all the words, which is quite exciting. Or you can break down the quizzes in multiple sections. Notice the quiz only has 10 words, but there's 50 in the list. So you can do multiple quizzes and get multiple different words. Or of course, you can simply work your way through the flashcards, all 50 in a row. So I'm gonna do a quiz from the second set. All of those words, integral, I would say could come up in the GRE. So, so far, I'm giving the words an A plus for their utility toward the GRE and SAT. Integral here means essential. If something is integral to the operation, it's essential, vital, critical to success. So it's essential. Great. Great. Genteel. Genteel, that's a harder word. It means kind of acting like a gentleman, I guess. Upper class, refined, yes. Of a superior quality, genteel. Good. A good way to remember that is it sounds a bit like a gentleman, like an upper class gentleman, genteel. Notice it's telling you how to pronounce it as well, which is helpful. Relinquish. To relinquish means to give something up, to give something away, to release what you've got. He relinquished his crown without a fight. Yeah. Yes. Cogent. One of these I might get wrong just to see what it sounds like if uh, you get it wrong. Anyway, to be cogent is to be clear and make sense. So, of those, I'd say it's to be persuasive. She made a cogent argument. Great. Great. I'll get the Ephemeral. last... Ephemeral. I get the last one wrong on purpose just to see what it sounds like. Ephemeral means lasting only a short time, so that's fleeting. Right. Platitude. Again, I will just say that this is no substitute for obviously doing lots of text completion questions because often the challenge there is to understand the context and flow of the passage, and I've done many videos on that. But a good vocab really doesn't hurt at all. And this website, I think, is great for building that vocab. A platitude is like a generality that you don't mean, a compliment almost that you don't mean, an insincere compliment. Oh, that was not on purpose. <laughs> Oh, did you hear the sound though? Oh, the guy sounded like in pain. Wait, a platitude. A platitude is not an, a, an insincere compliment, but I thought it was. I mean, I did start off by saying it was a generality, which is what trite means, like a cliche. I guess I just saw one answer without even checking it, without even looking at the others to see if there was a better answer. But I wonder if I'm just slightly misunderstanding the word. 
And I always thought, yes, it meant a generality, a trite phrase, like a cliche, but I also thought it meant, in general, a compliment. But maybe no, that's wrong. A platitude is nothing to do with complimenting someone insincerely. It's just any cliched saying. Right, so I deserve to get that one wrong, actually. And we heard the sound because a platitude is a trite saying, a cliched saying, no originality to it. It's overused, a cliche. All's well that ends well is a platitude. People say that way too much. I wonder a good way of remembering that. Attitude. Well, it's like a boring, placid attitude. A boring attitude because you just said it so many times. Platitude. Maybe that's one way of remembering it. I went for him for help and all I got were meaningless platitudes. This is not a compliment. Okay, I deserve to get that one wrong. Pristine. Pristine means pure. I'm going to race through these. Good. Demagogue. Demagogue is a bigot, but more so a rabble rouser. Actually, it's quite hard. A demagogue is someone who's ideological and believes in things firmly. So fanatical, yes, but a follower? It's more like a leader. Demagogue. A bigot, a rabble rouser. I think out of these, I would probably say a rabble rouser, but I'm not actually sure. Not the last two, I don't think. Promoter of evil, that's too harsh. And I like fanatical, but a follower? I thought a demagogue is someone who says it, but they could be a bigot or a rabble rouser. I think it's closer to, actually, I don't know, a demagogue. A bigot. I'm going to go for bigot, but it's could also be, I, I'm torn between these two, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. A demagogue is a rabble riser who tries to stir others up by playing on their emotions. Yeah, again, I need to be better at this. I mean, I guess most demagogues are bigots, but specifically a demagogue is someone who rouses the crowd up. So you see, I don't plan this. I don't get all of these right myself. I need to improve my vocabulary. Convivial. Convivial means festive. And like a party, like a friendly atmosphere. Yeah. Yes. Malaise. A malaise is something you sink into. It's like a, not depression, but like you're not getting much done and you like a swamp. Yeah, it's unease. You just don't feel right. Nothing's going quite well. It's, you're in a malaise. Right. And that's that. See if you can do better than me. I got two out of those 20 wrong there. So there's a lot I need to work on. But either way, a great way to learn vocab and hear how it's pronounced. If this was helpful at all, of course, please do leave a like and a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.